what then is the role of the Messiah? So traditionally, we've always thought the Messiah is the Savior. He will come and fix all our problems. That's not the point. God didn't create us with problems and then send somebody to fix our problems. I mean, what, what, you know, what's, what kind of plan is that? And fixing our problems is not a worthy goal, purpose for creation. We exist in order to fix our problems? <laughs> Don't create me. I won't have problems. I won't have to fix them. When earth becomes what it can be, it will be holier than heaven. Which literally means that all the souls in heaven will come back to earth. Because this is the place to be. In fact, in some sense, anybody who thinks that heaven is a better place than earth is a potential terrorist. <laughs> right? I mean, if you can go to a better place, you're dangerous. There, there is no better place. And when this world becomes what God wants it to be or needs it to be, it will be much greater than heaven. Now, heaven is eternal. When earth becomes godlier than heaven, earth will become eternal. So there will be no death, there will be no suffering, there will be no pain. It will be heavenly, but more heavenly. So once the world achieves its purpose, it will become eternal. It will last forever. And the closeness to God is also endless, infinite, and forever. You can get closer forever because he is, he is without end. So we can get closer, know more about him infinitely. So I guess the question is similar to you're dating, and you're going out, and you're meeting, and you finally get engaged, and then there's a wedding, and, you're, and now you're married. So now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> That's the whole purpose. Now you're married. We'll have to learn, and I think this is the primary role of the Messiah, as a teacher, we're going to have to learn the excitement of a world already good. Today we get excited when we can fix something. Something needs fixing, something you have to fight, the, the good fight, the, for cause and for... What, what if everything was good? Would we just be bored? You wake up in the morning, everything's fine. <laughs> You meet somebody, how are you? Fine. So boring. <laughs> we'll never be able to say, uh, pretty good, but my back is really... Uh, you won't be able to say that anymore. <clears throat> what are we going to talk about? <laughs> if we can't quetch about our pay aches and pains, what are we going to talk about? So we will have to learn a whole new way of challenging ourselves to be as excited to go from good to better as we are excited about going from bad to good. Like today we get excited about going from zero to 60. <laughs> After the world is fixed, there'll be no zero. No zeros. It'll either be from one to 10, or from 1 to 60, or from 1 to 100. So it'll only be an increase in goodness. How inspiring is that? Today it doesn't sound so inspiring. If I'm good enough, why bother? But when the world really achieves its perfection, getting better will be more exciting than getting good. And for that we'll have a whole new study. It's like, there's, I think there's a subject in college, uh, how to live in a peacetime economy. How do you run a country when you're at peace? Because 
Very few countries know what that's like. So how are we going to live when the world is at peace? That's when we're really going to need to know our purpose. So the Savior uh, role of, of the Messiah is a little exaggerated. Of course, he'll make, wor he'll make the world better. But primarily, it's our job to make the world better. What are we doing? Sitting around waiting for somebody else to make the world better? The primary role of the Messiah is an, a re-education. What do we do once our purpose is fulfilled? For this, we need a great teacher. But uh, to solve our problems, it would be nice. Because if we didn't have problems, we could attend to our purpose more fully. But you can't make solving your problems the goal in life. It's depressing. The harder you try to solve your problems, the worse they get. You try to do something for God's purpose, you're already happier and healthier and better off. It's like this guy who's suing his parents for giving birth to him. You've heard about the guy, right? He, he's on to something. <laughs> He really is saying something that needs a little thought. He's saying, I didn't ask to be born. You decided to give birth to me. And now you're telling me that I have to pay the mortgage? That doesn't make sense. I'm not paying anything. <laughs> you gave birth to me. You paid a mortgage. Doesn't that make sense? Now apply that to God. God creates you, doesn't ask you, and now you have to worship him. Excuse me? <laughs> How did that happen? How did it become my responsibility when I didn't ask for it? Is that a scary thought? Or is that liberating? It can't be that I am here to have my needs satisfied because I didn't need anything. You went ahead and created me without, without even asking me. So I, I don't need this. I don't need any of it. So it can't be that I exist to solve my needs. I had no needs. You went ahead and created me. Why? Obviously, whoever created me has the need, not me. So you see, we, we turn everything upside down. We're used to the idea that human beings are needy and depend on God for everything. True? Yes, but not interesting. <laughs> Depressing. And the more you focus on it, oh, you're so needy, you're in such trouble, you, you need help, you need to be saved, you need to... Uh, I didn't ask for this. This is not fun. <laughs> on the other hand, if he created me, doesn't he have a need? Doesn't that make more sense? So the guy suing his parents, they threw it out of court. Because that's not a good argument. He said, I didn't ask to be born, so you paid a bill. You know what the parents said? Hey, we didn't ask to be born either. <laughs> so grandpa should pay the bill. <laughs> and grandpa says, I didn't ask to be born. <laughs> so, so we can't sue each other. We got to go back to the source. God created us. It's his problem. And you know what the Torah says? What the Bible says? The Bible is basically God saying, I have a problem, can you help me? I need something, can you, can you help me? How can we help him? 
He gave us seven ways not to worship idols, not to be blasphemous, to disrespect God, not to murder, <clears throat> not to steal, not to commit adultery, not to be cruel to animals, and to have courts of law.